untrained eye, this might look like a regular HSV GTS R Malou. What it actually is, is one of just four Malou W1s. Following the end of local production, Walkinshaw Performance installed the W1 mechanicals into the Malou body for a handful of HSV VIPs. This included gaining all the necessary certification to ensure the cars are fully compliant and road legal. Despite this, three of the four are unlikely to ever see the public road. This one, however, will. So let's take a tour of what makes the Malou W1 different from the GTS-R on which it's based. The biggest change is under the bonnet, where the standard LSA engine is replaced with an LS9 from the previous generation Corvette ZR1. While still a 6.2 litre supercharged V8, the LS9 revs higher, uses a bigger supercharger, is dry sumped and has stronger internals, which allows it to produce 474 kilowatts and 815 newton meters. This amount of power demanded a new gearbox, so HSV had to adapt a strengthened Tremec to its needs. No easy task as it required a new input shaft, clutch, flywheel and modifications to the bell housing. The gearing is super long in the lower gears. It first runs to almost 100 kilometers an hour, but much shorter in the higher gears. Due to its longer wheelbase, the Malou has never been able to use HSV's magnetic ride control suspension. But the W1 Supershock dampers fit just fine, with the only suspension change being a tweak to the rear anti-roll bar. Brakes and wheel sizes are as per the GTSR, but the W1 uses these Trick Pirelli P0 Trifoio R tires. 265-35 at the front and 295-30 at the rear. These tyres transform the car and are key to the W1's racetrack abilities. Inside there's Alcantara for the steering wheel, gear lever and these awesome diamond quilted podium seats, as well as a number of W1 badges. The easiest way to spot a W1, apart from the badges of course, are these guard inserts made from carbon fibre, which is also used for the custom air intake. The only things the Malou W1 lacks is the rear wing, side skirts and quad exhaust, none of which work with the Malou's different dimensions. If you're wondering why only four of these beasts exist, HSV says it's because it could only secure a limited number of LS9 engines and any utes built would have reduced the number of sedans. Simply put, the business case didn't stack up. Each owner paid a small fortune for the Malou W1 to be built and thank God they did because it's arguably the ultimate Aussie muscle car.